up front with my fuck stick. 22 cent booty pit. 24 make movie flip. 26 mile high club. Three sims in a bathtub. GT for the lap up. Pray to God you meet each other in the mall or something. Ask you to hate me. Cause I fucked her best friend. She wanted to be a lesbian. Me too. Fat bitch on the E2. Fat boom on E2. Beat you. Slide to your wall walls. Ebony. POV. Met you on poor her. Hashtag. All cats. Fat ass. No water. Fuck his muddy daughter. Oh. oh. I'm not coming in next week. God damn. damn. Voices. Yeah. yeah that's what's so um, I've never sounded that way in my entire life. Uh, oh, I'm man. taking next week off. Say next this week. Because everybody been gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jen, you was gone last week. Jen gone this week. Oh so. yeah, yeah. But you know, Jim with the with the babies. Yeah, the babies, you know, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, babies get out. sick. You gotta just shout out to the babies. Over shout everything. out to the to the babies. Everything good with that. My so girl yeah. Jewel, Gemma. Gemma don't like me, huh? Who? Gemma, oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's right, you know, that's right. kids don't like me when I'm when they little. They don't they don't they don't like me at all. They cry when they see me. They frown when I get close. Think it's the bit. Think it's the bit. I don't know. They don't the like bed, me when the they get when I'm home. when they babies and stuff. But when I when they get a little older and they realize that you know Uncle Carl don't have no rules and stuff, yeah. he just let anything go down. That's when they you know. But you know, I mean, babies got their own go own Uncle personalities Carl. and you know. They say that babies stuff. don't like you. There's a problem though. So it could very well problem be... problem with the baby or a problem with you. No, oh, definitely probably the baby. Yeah, wrong with me. Yeah, baby, yeah, it's something, something wrong. Baby with retarded. Yeah, I'm stupid yeah, babies. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Baby stupid. They don't know no better. They dumb. But like Jen would always say, this is yeah, yeah. the one, the only, the two, two real, real radio. radio. We need so a, we need, we need, a, need a, Jen, a female voice saying, in there just to yeah. just to soften Somebody that off camera. But she, that she faking up though. I'm pointing at it over. She faking though. Sorry though. But anyway. So yeah, man. What's, what's crazy, How was your week? How was your? We haven't seen you in a while. You know the. Uh... Yeah, yeah. No, nah, it was alright, man. I mean, you know the, uh, the turkey, man. Turkey guy. Turkey, man. yeah. yeah. You turkey know, it's funny. We guy, did yeah. last week. We didn't wish anybody happy Thanksgiving. Jen doesn't do Thanksgiving, yeah, right. yeah. and I be stoned, mm-hmm. so I be forgetting sometimes. So she, we didn't wish anybody a uh, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. But I had a I had a good. I, I told her I went to my grandmother's house and hung out with my grandmother. She got Alzheimer's, so it was jive cool. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. She had the same shit over and over again for like an hour. It was great. It was cute. You just, you know. Take yeah. all this food home. All mm. this food. Oh my God. All this food. Oh my God. All right, this. Oh right, my right. God. I swear. Yeah. For like That's 20 minutes. Then she told another story for like an hour. It was it was great. It was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. It was a good holiday. It was a good holiday. No, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I mean, everything was cool, man. You know, chilling with the family, man, kids, and everybody over there. And uh, oh, had a good food, yeah. though. Good food, though. Yeah. Is it is there bad food on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's the food that be left over. Like a lot of it be left over, you know, not just a little bit. Bre- it's bre- be like brethren? A left over, yeah. I'm talking to my brother right brethren. Well, you know exactly what I'm up. talking about. Now he know what I'm talking about. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um about Thanksgiving's food. Oh yeah, yeah. But I oh, cook okay. I cooked. I cooked and oh, bro, um, went bro, to my grandmother's house. No, no, no. My, 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 my brother don't mess up no food. You know what I'm saying? He he don't he don't, you know. My gosh. Oh yeah, shouts out to uh, you know. I'm oh, so, I'm, so, I'm DC. so DC. So I've been, yeah, I've been drinking. Uh, it's been a, a battle. Francis. It's been a battle in my house to drink out of that. I'm so DC cup. Like she's plotting on that joint. Like, oh yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. Can't have nothing. Yeah, Can't have do nothing. the shelves out though, man. So yeah, that was that was dope. So um, this week's wrap up. What happened this week? More. There's just a whole bunch of more shit, man. more I mean, Donald Dump. I've been calling him Donald Dump yeah. all day. Donald Dump. More him. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of Donald um, bullshit. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, I'm laughing because GM is going through the motions right now. They are about to close some plants, lay off some yeah, people. Five of them. Probably, and and yeah. it's crazy because Obama saved him, I recall. But remember that money he gave them, man. They kicked that up to like the higher ups and gave them some, you know, oh, stupid bonuses. bonuses, stupid bonuses. That, you know so. what I'm saying? For almost bankrupting us, we're gonna give you a bonus. And then you know, Trump came through with the tariffs, and it, I just find it funny that every industry that he set out to bring back. It's closing. Mm-hmm. All of his number one supporters, his the people that voted for him, um, the number one nail factory in, in the United States. It's a, it's a factory somewhere in middle America that makes like almost all the nails using construction work. Mm-hmm. Every nail that you buy from Home Depot, these people, make, they about to close down. GM about to close job. down. Yeah, yeah, and they all were Trump supporters. You know, bring the jobs back to the factories. Bring right, it back to America. Overseas. No more yeah. China and Mexicans, yeah. Mexicans, Mexicans. He duped them though. I mean, think about it though. Straight he, pulled he the wool over their eyes. He told you he was going to do it though. It, 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 it's crazy. Um, yeah, he just duped them though. I mean, that's at the end he, of the day. He, he pulled a fast one on them, and then um, I, I, I just, just that—that's pretty much the week, the whole week. Donald Dump. Mm-hmm. 
Um, something else happened this week. I forgot, but I it, it wasn't as 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 I, I laugh every time a plant closes. I know people are losing their jobs and people about to be homeless and you know have to move back in with their parents at sixty five years old and you know what I'm saying and moving with their kids and all. But you voted for this idiot. You did this to yourselves. You're losing your Medicare, Medicaid. Yeah, old muscles everything, yourself, everything yeah. that you you know that you hate Obama for, Trump is taking away, and you guys are just. Uh, my aunt asked me, "What does he have to do for people to realize how much of a piece of a shit he is?" And I was like, "Ah, uh, right, he got a million passes, right? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, ain't, ain't, ain't nothing sticking, right? Grab some pussies. I don't yeah, know. Like, I mean, what else? Dumb, what right hasn't now. he? What hasn't he done mm-hmm. in his time? Gone <laughs> golfing like a hundred and seventy times." Like you've gone golfing more than you've been in office, and then this fucker, this fucker says, if y'all don't give me the money for this wall, I'm locking the government. I'm just going to stop the government from functioning. I'm just going to lock the whole game up. Like what? Yeah, he's going crazy with it. What? And then remember the joint he said today, like the uh, the OJ. I ain't do it, but if I did though, you know when they were talking about the whole Russia thing, because that's all of us coming. Your down man tried to right give now. Vladimir Putin a a, a penthouse. In Trump yeah, Plaza yeah. in Russia, mm-hmm. fifty million dollars before right. the before million, he was elected. Yeah. Fifty million. This is this is just. I don't know what more he has to do. This is corruption at its finest. This is this is yeah. just. We're gonna keep seeing how it unfold, though. I mean, it's always <laughs> something new with him. So man, it's almost comedy at this point. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 it's dark comedy. Um. So this month it's National Adoption Month. Okay. Um. I know a bunch of people that have been adopted, and I have, and I know a bunch of people that that have have views on adoption, like who should, who shouldn't, who shouldn't. But um, thanks to adoption, man, I got the family that I have. You know, my lady mm-hmm. was adopted. You know what I'm saying? Which gave me my beautiful son. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And mm-hmm. everybody needs a home. So today for Adoption Month, we have um, Shanita O'Neill from uh, the FCN Foundation. Okay. It, um, they did with foster care and things of that nature. And then we have Miss Levita and Miss. I didn't get this second. Jackie. Jackie. No, Charles. No. Hawthorne. Jackie Hawthorne. It was the third one that was supposed to be coming, but they didn't. Uh-huh. And they um they actually grew up in the foster care system, so they'll be able to tell us firsthand, yeah, you know, it, what that is and what that's like. So we're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna go get Miss Shanita o- Shalita O'Neill, yes. and we'll be right back. To real radio.
we're back. What's up? Chuck left us. Chuck Chuck was like, hey. somewhere over here, right? He, he rolled out. Somewhere. Can we get my man in the box? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're coming right. up inside. They, they know I'm here. They know I'm here. Don't don't block my guests, man. No, no, no. Nah, you we good. Nah, 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 y'all good. Nah, good. Nah, good. Nah, he going to little yeah, box. Y'all going to see me press, inside. Yeah. Box. Thank y'all for coming through. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. So uh, first, introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about yourselves. So my name is Levita Staten. I am from D.C. Um, this is my sister Jackie here. We're both from D.C. Um, I guess to say a little about myself, I'm a mother of two, have a nonprofit for special needs, and I do have some experience with, I don't want to say necessarily foster care, but being labeled, I guess, a foster child. Okay, you said being... You don't want to, you said being labeled a foster child, what do you mean? By like that? our stories are a little different. We're okay. blood sisters. We share the same mother. Okay. But yeah. I was actually put in a family's house opposed to my sister's situation is a little different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I was adopted by my aunt, okay. but I didn't go into the actual foster care home Still opposed family. to her. So, uh, okay. What? But. What exactly, um, so you were adopted straight into a family and you were put into a, what is a foster care situation? So we both were split into family homes, Okay. but they had a different occurrence where they had to be taken out of that family's home and be put into the actual system, foster care system, opposed to I was adopted, like we didn't have parents, our parents weren't there, so I was adopted by my aunt and she raised me, but she and my other sister actually went into foster care. Okay, so what what is... Foster care. I guess the difference is, I mean, how do you want to say it? I guess the difference is when you're not system, with, when you're in a system, you're I mean, you're in a system either way because you're not raised by your, your you child, by your parents, person. biological, but when you're actually put into a system where you're okay. going to have someone that's going to come either take you from a group home or going to take you into their homes and raise you, and they're actually getting a stipend a month to actually take care of you. I'm, I'm used to, when I think foster care, I had a couple of buddies in foster care, and I always thought of, uh, um, for them, it was a group home situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, oh, home by this time, home by that time, out by this time, in by this time. Um, basically a house full of guys, uh, right. young men or whatever. Um, but then you also hear about the foster, the, you have the parent, the, 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 the family that brings in kids, they come through, they bring them through, then they pass, almost like a pass through, not a pass through situation, but they bring them in, take care of them for a little while. Oh, my mic, I'm sorry. Age, yeah, I've been to a certain age, or, or I, I'm not sure, so I'm just kind of. Yeah, so mm -hmm. like kind of think of it like this, like you know how you hear about formal daycare, like okay. formal daycare is actual at a center. Informal is when you're actually in a home, but okay. I have the child care license to take care of kids in my right. home for a certain amount of kids. Mm -hmm. So kind of think of it like that, like informal, which was her, and I'm formal because I'm in an actual, in an actual family home, member's right. home, right. but we are both mm -hmm. adopted from our parents, if that makes sense. Now, how, how did that, um, how did, first of all, how did your experience, your different experiences, you know, um, how were the, the, the experiences different? Like you said, you were in a, in a family's home and you were... It was different, I mean, because we were both separated from our parents and we were both put into a family member's home. I mean, we've always had a relationship, but the relationship kind of got a little tough when they were kind of taken out of the family member's home and put into the actual foster care system, group home, like you group said. Home started mm -hmm. So it kind of tugged away a little bit. But initially, I mean, we kind of grew up in two separate backgrounds. Like, okay. I mean, I kind of feel like, Sometimes people look at me like the spared golden child, but that does not mean that I had it all good, right, you know. Right, right. But right. Mm -hmm. their situation was a little more tougher because they were not with family and they were actually with strangers, and they had to go by all those rules and regulations mm -hmm. and group homes, and you know, like they moved around a couple times. And how how was that for you, being you know in a less um, stable, I guess? Well, um, when I was adopted. I was probably a couple months at the time. So me getting older um, actually kind of knew slowly like what was going on as far as, you know, the older I got, you know, the more stories I hear and, you know. So um, I got adopted. Uh, I would say I was probably like maybe maybe seven months, something like that. I'm not sure. My, um <laughs> 
And my sister, who's not here, she was probably like a few months older than me. But um, we left that house um, when we was probably 11. I was 11 and she was 12. And we went into um, a group home. The first group home was called Boys Town. It's off of um, Sergeant Road. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a unisex. You have females, you have males. One side is the females, one side is the males. Same underneath the same roof though but um we stayed there for a certain age then we went to another group home called iona whipper home that's off of, uh like um shannon road i think that was no question right. like yeah mm -hmm. so um not too far from the dc tunnel so um we went from there then after there i got adopted by another family and from there it just was like a independent living situation you know I was like on my own learning everything and the streets raised me per se because it seemed like I was in the street because I was going from house to house and you know I met a lot of people along the way um, it's been I had I had my ups and downs every day and you know but I always attended school I always was a motivation to my other peers and um, house housemates and everything so I kind of went through the through you know the um, the downfalls a lot more than reaching the positive sides, but the positive side was that I continued to go to school and do what I got to do, and you know I graduated from high school. I did some college a little bit, and then I went to um, cosmetology school, and now I'm I got stuck. I had my first child at the age of 23. Um, her father passed when she was like five months, so. I had to pick up a job really quick, so I settled for Trader Joe's. I've been there for like 12 years now, and um, everything is just gradually growing. Like, mm -hmm. um, my life is changing. I do not regret my past at all. I, I believe it actually made me stronger, you know, because it's like I've been independent for so long. I'm just used to it. Mm -hmm. And I think I got a taste of the real world, and I feel like there's nothing that could break me. You took my next. My next question was how did how did that impact you know that that you know instability? How did that impact you you know growing up? But you just basically went into yeah. it. It is you know the bumps yeah. and bruises along I the mean, way. And you come across um, a situation, and you never know the outcome of the situation, and you just you just pray and thank God for putting positive people in your life. To, to better your situation. And I came across some positive, loving people and they was like really there, they had my back. So it just felt like I could do whatever, you know, even though I didn't have the support from my biological family, but I had support from strangers. I had support from group home staff. I had support from my um, my housemates, you know. It was like, you know, everybody had their little cliques in the house mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody just was supportive and everybody had each other back. and. To me, when I was in um, the group home, it felt like I was in college, you know, because it's like a lot of people, you have like at least maybe 10 to 12 girls in the house, different ages, you know. Um, you have the bully girls, you have the nice girls, you have the, everybody had their own little mm -hmm. cliques and stuff, but um, I got along with everybody, you know. I feel as though if I can make people laugh, we all get together and, you know, just have some fun and, I just felt like everybody got along. And plus, I knew how to do hair. So I was doing oh, yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah. hair. And, you know, yeah. so everybody no. used to call me they little sis. And, you know, and I used to design clothes and everything. So um, I don't regret my past. I do regret having, you know, that that moment. Sometimes you think, like, I wonder how life would, would be if my mom was here and my dad raised me and, you know, Will life be okay, or will I have to go through this, or you know? But I mean, I had those moments sometimes, but I don't, I don't regret it. I don't regret my past at all. I just, I'm thankful that I could actually say that, and um, despite you know, the negative things I witnessed, you know, not just for myself, but for my, my other sister, you know, and she still trying to get over that hurdle, but. Um, She's not quite there yet, but I'm glad that 
you know, I can express myself to people and kind of like lift them up a little mm-hmm. bit and let them know that just because you're going through the storm doesn't mean a rainbow is not at the end, you know. So. Right. Now, were you and your sister able to stay together or was it a thing of trying well, to split y'all apart? Like, how does that work my when your sister was siblings? Very, uh, she was kind of out of control. So we'll say emotionally troubled. Em- yeah. Okay. For so, a better lack of terms. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, naturally. She I spoke mean. her mind a lot. And, you know, if she felt like she was mistreated a certain way or somebody disrespected her or, you know, it just, and she couldn't let go of the past of what happened to her. Um, in our first, uh, home we was in, um, you know, um, it was abuse, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Um, I'm not gonna go into details, yeah. but you know, some things it's just hard for certain people to let go and to um, get over that and move on. But she was just like she had so much, and um, I I want to say uh, it kind of I want to say that it it was pretty much like. Um, she was the one that was going through more than, um, like it, everything was happening to her, more so than it was happening to me. And me being young, I had no idea of like where it came from, how it started, and so I started, uh, you know, seeing little things, and you know, the police came and got us from the house and took us away. So, you know, I started figuring things out, but. Um, it's mm-hmm. n- it's not easy for everyone. It's yeah, not nah, easy. I'm, yeah, no, nah, yeah. I understand. And I, I just know, you know, sometimes like um, the effort to keep families together, you know, mm-hmm. when they go into the system, you know, as opposed mm-hmm. to like separating them and breaking them up, yeah. you know. Yeah. So was there an issue with you all connecting again? Like, so I don't think there were... was an issue. Um, I mean, because like I said, like our families were like families, but I, so I, I think, yeah, like right, we okay, always okay. stay connected. Like okay. there wasn't a celebration that we didn't celebrate together, like okay. birthdays, That's Christmas. Right. Like we, I remember <laughs> we met several times, like at a different building or different locations, or even when I was old enough to get on the Metro bus and I would catch the train and the bus all the way over to where you guys were. But I think it was just like differences or maybe the people that actually became responsible for us couldn't keep all of us together. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I don't really know the depth of that, but. I think Angela From what I heard, that's kind of what happened. So, yeah. yeah. So it kind of became like a split thing, but I don't know. Um, and maybe because they were closer in age, I'm a little older than them. Maybe mm-hmm. that's why them two kind of stayed together, I I suppose. Yeah, but I mean, as so far as the growing up and the keeping the relationship, I mean, we pretty much kept that between ourselves as we got older. And like Correct. I said, as I got older, like my goal was to... Like, oh, I'm going to adopt my sisters when I get 18. But, I mean, life went a different way, and it didn't go that way. But, I mean, even after those troubles and everything occurred, like, we still kept in touch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, how did how did um, being in foster care and, and having that separation from your sisters and, 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 and still maintain that family, how did that shape your adult life? How did that shape how you... You know how you conduct your your your, your current life. Oh, you have kids, you have kids, right? I do. Yes. So I hated that, it. Um, we all have two kids. I hated it as a kid. I mean, because the first thing kids want to know is like, where your mother? Where your father? I'm here. You know, and I, then you got to make up an excuse. Well, like, um, they at work. You know, like you don't. When you're a kid, you're not you're not embracing with that type of information. You're not open to sharing that type of talk. So it's just like you make up a reason and you're making up excuses. Like, oh, well, I live with my aunt and, you know, let's get the subject. Mm -hmm. And, you know, actually my friends always thought I was the the cool kid because I guess I had a little more leeway, but I I wasn't happy about not Not being able to say that I have parents and then you guys keep telling me about your mother and your father and, you know, those type of things. I mean, so it kind of hurtled me a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, it affected a lot of my decisions as an adult, you know, so, Mm -hmm. but... Now, for my two kids, I just try to preach to them, like, I know I might get on your nerves. I have a teenager. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she's like, oh, I don't want to hear this. Listen, I had my mother to tell me some of this stuff. You know what I mean? And I'm not telling you to be a hurdled mother or to helicopter you or whatever, but I'm Mm -hmm. telling you to actually guide you because this is what I know. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't want you to make some of the mistakes that I've made, but, I mean, I'm learning to know that you kind of got to let your kids just free away and kind of learn on your own but I mean I feel like 
there can never be anything that can actually help you to get over whatever it is that you went through emotionally, not having a mother and a father. Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I my aunt agree. raised me, and I Mine mean, too. So I, it, like, it's, I love my aunt dearly. I love my parents, but there's a different type the, of but, respect. But, but, but having to, I told somebody the other day, I said, having to consciously not call your aunt mom. Yeah, um, yeah. Having to, you know, all the things that you go through when, because I was. I, and it's kind of a, it's, I was thinking to myself while you were saying it, it's like a, almost like a a, 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 a black family mm-hmm. thing where your grandma, your aunt, something mm-hmm. happens in your family and you go to your aunt yeah. or you go to your grandma's house and that's who, you know, is, is responsible for raising you. But like, like your situation, my brother and I were, I'm seven years older than my brother, mm-hmm. so we couldn't live together. So he had to go to my grandma's, I had to go to my aunt's house. Mm-hmm. So that kind of our relationship. We were still close because we were all, you know, the only two we have. So right. it's like, it's just us. But you start to kind of separate. Kind of took a drift, yeah. 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 So I, I definitely understand. Mm-hmm. But the, the and the hardship that nobody thinks about, like mm-hmm. the holidays, the, you know, where's your mom? Why right. do you live with your aunt? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and then kids what? don't, kids don't know. And you piece of shit parents that, <laughs> that know better. I had parents that would, you know, have me over for lunch dates. Mm-hmm. With their kids or something, they would get me in the kitchen and be like, "So, uh, as they slide that sandwich across the table, Ben knows. Where's your mom? <laughs> and as a kid, and, and and I had the benefit of having an aunt that sent me immediately to therapy. Like, mm-hmm. you got to go to therapy because you're going to have some issues. Like, yeah. it's going to come. So I had that that in me. And um, the one thing therapy doesn't teach you as a kid is the, they teach you it's not your fault, right? Of course, it's not your it's not your cross to bear. So I would just be like, oh yeah, she's dead. You know what I'm saying? And they'd be like, oh. Cookies. Yeah. How she died. And then you get into the hole, and then you just like, uh, uh, and then, you know, my aunt's telling me, you don't be telling people your business. And it's yeah. like, well, I mean, I don't know any. So I definitely understand, you know, the the, the sense of not having and um, how it shapes. Right, as an know. adult. And I remember that actually, like, because my aunt was married and she, they had a child. So I grew up with her like a sister, but she's actually my cousin. And because I heard her always say mom and dad, like, I repeated it. Mm-hmm. But it was like they shut me down, like, no, we're, we're not your mother and your dad. We're your aunt and your uncle, you know. But I still always felt that emptiness of being able to say mom and dad because that's what I always heard, mm-hmm. you know. So now, now being, um, in the system, partially in the system, in the system. What do you see are some of the um, the downfalls of 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 placing kid of, of placing kids in foster homes, or some of the downside? Like you said, you had an abusive mm-hmm. uh, in a, an abusive situation, you know, of mm-hmm. an abusive family. How, uh, what are some of the other things that people just don't know that are going on in foster, or some things they need to be even well, changed that you feel need to be changed from you know being there firsthand? The first and first most thing, first and foremost, I want to say is what you say, therapy. Like, I didn't Mm -hmm. go to therapy. And Mm -hmm. for a long time, because I didn't feel like I had a whole bunch of emotional trauma, I felt like I was fine. I don't need therapy. But as I'm getting older, I need therapy. Everybody. We've talked about it before. How it's like taboo in (laughs) our community to, you know, go to therapy. Everybody needs therapy. I don't care if if you're normal. Everybody needs therapy to know what happened. What I learned from therapy was what happens when you're... My therapist was was an asshole. Great guy, Dr. Johnson. If you, Dr. Roosevelt Martin Johnson, really, really, quali- uh, really qualified guy. He would, I would have days where I would have amazing days. Mm-hmm. I come into therapy skipping, like, look, we could talk about the baseball game last night. It was great. And he'd be like, right, let's talk about your mom and your dad. And I'd be like, nah, not today. <laughs> and he'd be like, no, let's talk about that. He said, you're going to have times where you're going to be on cloud nine and something's going to hit and it's going to drag you all the way down. So, sure. how do you deal with that? So you said therapy was one of the things that... That I felt like I should have been... Like, that should have been placed in in, in my upbringing. But it, it wasn't. So, like I said, because I didn't go through what they went through. I mean, I went through things. And I hate to compare them because they were both unfortunate. Both but, right, right. you know, like, I felt like I was trained to feel like, oh, ain't nothing happened to me that serious why I need therapy. Like, I'm fine. But mm-hmm. in all naturality, it, it took was me mandatory for us. a long time to realize <laughs> as an adult homes. now, I uh, need therapy. Now, how do you feel about it being... Cause you it was like, mandatory. Was when I was in a group home, it was mandatory. Every kid had to see a therapist like at least um, two or three days out of a week. Um, I really didn't feel like I need to see a, a therapist. For some reason, I don't know. Maybe because I always talked about it, I feel like mm-hmm. I let right. it out already. So, 
I really didn't feel the need, but I went because, you know, she used to teach me sign language, but she was really cool. <laughs> did, did you get but, any benefit from it? Or yeah, you, she you was did? really uh, nice. I forgot her name, but she was really nice. But I really felt like I didn't need her. And, like, the sessions would be so short, and we just go on teaching sign language because I don't know if I talk too much for her or I don't, I really, I don't know. I so you don't really feel like it. that affected you, like, now as an adult? You don't feel like you need it no more? No. Mm-mm. I don't. I guess because I faced it, I told myself what it was. I'm not hurt. I'm li- I'm living. I'm breathing. Right. I mean, right. it's the past. I accepted it. I mean, I wish I could say mom. But one thing I noticed, I never called. Um, like since I've been adopted, I never called like the person that adopted me mom. Like my first adoptive parent, I always called her grandma. It's just like I always had to put something in it. It couldn't mm-hmm. just be mom or like um, Miss Pat. I always called her Miss Pat. You know, I just couldn't. I don't know why, but I just feel like I couldn't say the word mom. That mm-hmm. was my only thing, you know, when I got adopted. But as um, far as the therapist thing, I, mm-hmm. I really didn't feel the need for it. But well, I'm going to yes. tell you the thing with therapy. When you tell people like, yo, I'm, I'm okay. And they be like. Are you really? And you right. be like, yeah, actually, I am. You but know, and they be like, I, are you really? Right. No, no, no. I'm agreeing with you though, because you what know, I'm saying like, is, certain people, I, I think the way they look at the world is different, you know, and yeah. they can understand certain things, and some people can't. And I've had conversations with some people where their mind is completely different than mine, and mine's is like, I'm open to that stuff, and they like, oh, well, I couldn't do it, and it's like, well, yeah, you probably would need to talk mm-hmm. to somebody, or not to say I don't need to talk to somebody, but maybe I can handle it a little bit more than you can. Mm-hmm. And I think just certain people are built differently than others, you know? Right, so, that's what I so I understand exactly where you're coming yeah. from. Like, yeah, I'm okay with it. I it's, mean, it's cool. you know, like, I forgave you know. my parents. I mean, my mom, she was on drugs. My dad, he was locked up. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't even remember. We was living in paradise at the time. And I think this was the first time I seen our mother, um, for the first time. But, um, when I first saw her, I didn't even know what to think. I didn't know if I should go and greet her, give her a hug, or say hello, introduce myself, because it felt like I don't know. Mm-hmm. But um, it just it just felt kind of, I don't know. I didn't know what to expect in that moment. Um, but I forgave her. We talked. You know, we're really close right now mm-hmm. to this day. Um, she She's very spiritual. And, you know, she could curse you out and still, like, love you and pray for you at the same time. But um, my mom, she's not the perfect mom, but she's working on it. Um, She never put her hands on us, even though we get on our nerves. Like, she never put her hands on us. Mm -hmm. Um, She will always walk away. You know, she's a great babysitter. She's a neat freak. She love to cook. She love to clean. And I always wonder, she would have been, like, she would have been a good mom if it wasn't for the drugs. Like, just seeing her doing what she's doing now for her grandkids and, you know, just uh, just to sit and witness that she was okay. But it just was the drugs that, you know, made her turn a different way. Like, But um, today she's still getting herself together. You know, every day is a challenge for everyone, you know, when you're trying to overcome drugs or any kind of addiction, you know. Um, but I don't see all bad in her. You know, mm-hmm. she's still my mom at the end of the day. I still have to respect her. It's in the Bible. Respect your mom and your parents. You know, your days should, you know, you know the rest. But um, I, I really, I really love my mom. And I, I forgave the situation. And I feel like, you know, she, she understood what she did was wrong. She, you know, we talked about it. Mm-hmm. And I told her, I said, it's fine. Because... Your bad choice in life was like a good opportunity for me in life, you know, because I met so many great people and I'm just like so blessed and so thankful for that opportunity. And I'm strong. I know what decisions to make. What You know, I've been through everything. So it's like it was like college being in a group <laughs> home. was like college. Like we party. We had fun. You know, we went to right. school. We snuck out, you know, seeing the boys up the street. But it was just like, you know college Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. they was my family i embraced them you know so it was like a um, learning experience and a loving experience at the same time like i feel like i didn't lose anything i feel like i gained more than what i lost i see what you're saying yeah 
you, 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 that's a good way to look at it. You kind of, it's funny listening to you talk to say like, you know, because you, you felt like you didn't need therapy, but the way that you're, the way you approach it is everything that my therapist told me, you know, it's not your problem. That's your parents' problem. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness, yeah. move on with your life, be strong. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's like you were saying, everybody doesn't need therapy mm-hmm. necessarily. You know, some people find it on their own. Did mm-hmm. you find, was there something, um, was there an adult or a, um, an activity or a coach that just gave you that outlook? Um, I would say it was probably, uh, the staff. Um, there was a lady named Miss Howard. She passed Janice Howard. Um, she was like a mother to us and, you know, she always had that open ear and, you know, you could talk to her about anything. So I had, I came across a lot of good people. So I don't know if I got an old soul or I don't know if I, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's just, I just opened up, I guess, mm-hmm. and I just embraced well, it. And Your therapy came but, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a less formal, um, a less formal set. You didn't have to sit on the couch and sit with somebody with a legal pad and they just, <laughs> you know, we'll see you next week. Right? You never get to see jotting, I'm so curious as what's in my notes because he jotted a lot. It's a lot of notes. And, and, and you know, you don't get to, you don't get to know what, what that is. Exactly. But for me, that was the therapy I got. But I guess your therapy was less less formal. Somebody to just listen. But I guess by her being in that situation, being in a foster situ- foster care situation, she's used to, you know, being that mm-hmm. type of therapist. So maybe you got the therapy that you... And I can understand. I mean, that. I don't know if it helped, but I mean, I wasn't like, um, like, I, like I, w- I didn't feel like I really needed to talk to someone because mm-hmm. I was talking to a lot of people already. You know, I was talking to the staff. I was talking to my friends. I was talking to a lot of people, you know, um, so... When I went to her, I was just happy to be there because she was so cool and, you know, she was teaching me sign language and, you know, she had snacks and, you know, <laughs> we had our little rap sessions and then, you know, it, I mean, I just, I don't know. I think I was, I think like, kind of like what you said, like you kind of look at it in a different perspective. Like I honestly feel like, and this is just my opinion and I'm speaking for my own self. I feel like you've got to a point where you block so much out around you, you make mm-hmm. yourself feel like you're fine. You don't need mm-hmm. that extra additional support. That's what I did. Like, I wrote in the diary for 18 years. And I was like, when I'm 18, I don't even want to read this stuff no more. I threw it away. But, like, I was never okay as a kid. Like, I can be sitting here playing with you. You thinking I'm the cool kid on the block. I really want to go over your house. But you want to come over my house. Mm-hmm. I hated it. Everything about it. Mm-hmm. But I always made myself feel like I'm just everything around me is I'm like tunnel vision. I don't see none of this. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go to school and get up, I'm gonna stay out the next night so it's time for me to go in the house so they looking for me. And this is with family. You know, so to say all that, like for years I blocked it out. Like y'all thought it was always gravy for us and it really wasn't. So like saying all that to say it took me to get over thirty to realize I'm not fine. That stuff is actually still bothering me today. And that's when I kinda feel like, Oh, I thought I blocked it out, but mm-hmm. I didn't. Because then I had no choice. I know what else to do. Just put it in the box, wait for it to overflow. <laughs> you know. Now, what let me ask you this: when you yeah. when you did your therapy, did the therapist say anything that made you like, oh shit, I didn't even think about that? Or like, did did they touch on things that you've already touched on, but you might not have explored? But did they literally like, wow, I never even thought about that. Like, so I'm still searching in that about? therapy part because the one time that I mm-hmm. did find one, mm-hmm. we had like four sessions, and I felt like the first two I probably was just rambling. And like you said, it was just like, I didn't feel the connection. Mm-hmm. So I stopped going. So like to this day, I'm still searching for okay. a therapist that I, got, I actually I got, I got a really, feel a connection with. So I got, y'all got really some referrals, two, give two, them to me. Two really good Because I don't feel like, I don't like talking to somebody. And you know, it's, I mean, you got to do your job. You're going to write it down. But if yeah. I don't feel the physical connection to just know that I'm not rambling and I'm actually getting mm-hmm, that peace mm-hmm. and that calm that I need, then I'm not comfortable here. Mm-hmm. I had a, I had a, my, my therapist was really, um, really thoughtful. I went to Saturday sessions, anger management sessions, and I went to once a week, twice a week at first and once a week. Um, and he really, it's funny. I can hear him talking in my head now. Are those Carl helping thoughts or Carl <laughs> hurting uh, thoughts? The and I'd be like, yeah. and hurting <laughs> thoughts. And he'd be like, I mean, so how does that make you, you know, he was really, um, really got me to think. Um, I told people he drove me crazy. <laughs> Because I told people I can identify now when I'm about to lose it, mm-hmm. but I still can't stop it. 
So I mean, probably need to go back at this point in my life. But I can identify like, yo, I'm about to lose it. I'm about to go. I'm about to go into crazy mode. Like, I can feel it brewing. So stop. But mm-hmm. if you don't stop, it'll keep. But it definitely helped me um, put everything into perspective. Like you know, that's that's my dad's problem. That's my mom's problem. So I don't have to deal with it anymore. So that that gave me a, a level of forgiveness. Gotcha. Um, um, he got me. He got me to identify people as a, as you know, not just my parents, but as people themselves, as flawed individuals. So. You know, you're looking at them as these heroes, and they're just people. You know, they're not your heroes. They're just people, and they're gonna they're gonna bump, they're gonna bru- they're gonna knock stuff over, they're gonna fall, they're gonna you know disappoint, and that's just what people do. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I got from it. Um, and like I can say, I probably like I said, now that I'm 35, I'm thinking myself, I should probably start going back again because now there's other things that I'm dealing with mm-hmm. that are uh, products of you know stuff that I went through before. So my the way I carry my relationship, my mm-hmm. my relationship with my son, all of that has to do with. You know what I saw previously, right. so it, it definitely shaped you know the way I look at it now. But I, I'll definitely, when we finish, I'll give you the number. I, I don't have this number, but I'll give you the name. He, he and his wife are really, really good therapists. Yeah. And then, like I say, some sometimes you got to go see your own. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. the understand you know the whole grandma, grandma is your parent, and mm-hmm. you know that type of thing. So I'll definitely yeah bring some good people. So is adoption something that y'all would do? Like having I done the whole thing, would y'all uh, would you adopt? If yeah. I had like a huge house, I would be like Angelina Jolie, like yeah. like two I different so you do it. What about like, you? Yeah, I, I always wanted to adopt before I had Especially kids. Especially a boy. Hmm. Yeah. But I don't have no boys. Like I said, these were supposed to be my first adoptive kids, but I realized I was like only a couple years older than them, so really mm-hmm. how was I going to be able to man that? But even before I had my two kids, like I've always wanted to adopt. So yeah, that's definitely it. I know one plan. thing with the adoption process is uh, the babies always get picked. You know, like mm-hmm. as you get older in the system, you babies. get lost in the system. See, that's what I'm saying, want right? Because the, the, the older shy. ones, Pass, like special needs, the they stage. get... Exactly, right. And the daycare fees and... First grade, I'm good. Hey, say first grade, yeah. beast, yeah. man. Eleven hundred dollars. I want eleven hundred dollars. I want to sleep daycare. at night. I don't. I want to skip the whole little baby stage. But see, then there's the difference. Like, in my opinion, again, I feel like you have to ask people: Do you want to adopt or do you want to foster? Mm. I want to adopt. I'm, I mean, I salute the now people the, that foster. The I mean, like, foster is that child can come live with you, but when you're ready for that child to roll out, or when they, they roll out, it's like a job. They're 18, getting paid oh, for that's it. A foster you know family. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't really feel like it's nothing genuine. I feel like you're doing that as a job. You know so what adoption I mean? is official. Adoption you're is official. Uh, your family. Like, yeah. that's you're part, my family. you're part of the family. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For the long, you're in it for the long haul. Yeah. yeah. Marriage, no all that stuff. My first adoptive parent, her name is on my birth certificate. Okay. So mm-hmm. like once you know get once you get adopted it's like exactly that's that's your child. Uh, you okay. know I mean she was getting a check, I'm sure. Yeah, she was. She was getting a check, but um, it has its ups and downs too. When I was living with my first adopted um, family, you know she was kind of cheap. You know she was like seven. No, she was sixty three. That's what it said on the birth certificate mm-hmm. when she adopted me. And she was kind of cheap, like she would have her biological family drinking regular whole milk. Me and my sister, we would drink canned milk that she would mm. get, like from, uh, like you know, people passing out. I thought the canned milk just went in the You know, yeah. nah, yeah. man, we used to have canned milk half and half with water and so- <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, stuff. Exactly the free milk. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? But I'm positive. And I'm asking because I we remember playing times going milk. over there eating this meal with them. She was a good cook. I'm not going to say she was a bad cook, but she was a good cook. But she had her little ups and downs like when so it there came was definitely to the, the cheap level. The favoritism. That, it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, because, um, towards her kids, towards her children. Or? Because I had a cousin, her name was Siobhan, and she was staying with us. It was my sister Chris and Siobhan. We all, it was three of us. And um, sometimes my other cousin, he would come over and he was funny. He was a little picky eater you know whatever and um they always had whole milk and i'm like i don't like this canned milk it tastes kind of weird you know it was i don't know even when it was cold it still wasn't good it just was like that aftertaste or something but we always had to drink the canned milk and they drunk the good milk so that was the only thing i didn't like about that but um 
She was cheap. I don't know if she was old, but you know, old people sometimes they stuck in their ways and you know, they try to save a penny. So, um, you buy no extra milk. Sometimes you gotta. <laughs> and like, um, she was giving y'all the good milk. That's what it was. The milk was when the it good came milk. to the shoes, no. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I remember I used to like uh, sneak my, a pair of my best friend's shoes to school or, you know, I'm like, Grandma, can we get some Reeboks? Like, everybody wear Reeboks. You know, we would get the Payless shoes or. My cousins, they would get the new ballads because he was a boy and she would say fashion is more, you know, a boy has to look a certain way and it's cheaper, you know, for the girls. You can find cheap, cute stuff and the boys, you know, they'll mess up their stuff with the cheap shoes. It'll, you know, it'll fall apart or whatever. Sound like a bunch of bullshit. But exactly. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I have so I'm many questions. questions. They don't want to pay that, that, that 40 something dollars for the Reeboks, but, yeah. you know. Our allowance was five dollars a week, so. <laughs> but at an early age, living with her, I think I went to the laundromat when I was probably like seven or eight. It was probably a block away. We used to put our um, clothes in a pillowcase. That was our our bag to carry our clothes. Put it all in the pillowcase and walk down the streets in the laundromat. But um, I mean, it's it's memories or whatever. But it's like you know. They're funny, so I can laugh at it. But mm. she had a little cheap moments. It was kind of funny, but <laughs> I, I don't you know, laugh, man. I'm but laughing. you know, I don't know. I guess that was her way of. Well, I need a can to open to drink my milk. That half and half. That was that carnation. <laughs> yeah, right. Y'all right. 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 put that yeah. water in it, though. It was not yes, carnation. Yeah, y'all put, put the water, the water in. in. Um, no, sir. no. One thing that you said that that I always tell people, I think that. My life would have been so much different, so much more different had I had both of my parents. And I kind of think of the child that I was before they were taken, before I was taken from them. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I would have enjoyed the person that I would have been today. Mm-hmm. Um, my brother gets so mad when I say that. Um, I pro- like the person that I feel like I would have been, I would have been the person that I would have would have wanted to beat up around the corner. Like, I hate that nigga. I right get there, you. Man. You know, um, and I think that not having or being having that taken from or, or taking that, that alternate path kind of gave me an appreciation for people, things, um, and it just made me a better person. Do you feel like maybe in, 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 in another situation you wouldn't have came out? Because you were saying your strength, you got your strength from there, your, you know, your, your, your motivation and all that. Do you think that in another situation or in, in the opposite situation you wouldn't have been the same person that you? Sometimes, yeah. And I, I actually thought about that before. Like, if I didn't, you know, um, if I wasn't brought up in a system or if I didn't get adopted, like, would I be this tough? Would I be this, you know, independent? Would I be this? Would I be that? Or would I be, like, this stuck-up kid that's spoiled or, you know? And sometimes I, I think about that a lot. I really do. I think about that. I don't know. I really can't say, but I'm glad that it didn't turn out that way. If That sounds weird, but... I like my struggle and I like my independence and how I came up and I, I don't regret it at all. I know. Where you, you, where you are now is, you know, you're happy to be where you are. You're happy to I'm have happy pulled yourself up from where you, you know. Coming from of- my circumstances, yes. I'm very mm-hmm. happy. I'm very blessed because, I mean, it wasn't the, the most easy situation. I mean, growing up. At the age that I was, so young, you know, just experiencing everything with no parents and, you know, just trying to find, you know, um, love from a stranger and, you know, motivation and just words, I love you, I care about you, you know, it, it I mean, stuff like that, you know, it kind of wakes you up a little bit mm-hmm. and you kind of embrace it and and just to hear those words, you know, that was that was your encouragement. That was, you know, that was your motivation to do the positive thing. You know, everybody want to see the bad thing. They think every because a child is in the system, they're going to fail or they're going to fall to the streets or they're going to, you know. I was just always the one that was trying to motivate the other kids there so we won't be what people think we're going to be, you know, so... They used to call me the little nerd geek because I used to be like, come on, it's 8 o'clock, we got to get up. Oh, we late. Or, you know, trying to rush them and get them up. And Tyra was my uh, was my um, roommate when I was in a group home. 
And she's like successful. She's like living the, Mer the American dream right now. And I'm so proud of her, you know. I motivated her. I encouraged her to go to school. She went to school. She went to college. She got married. She, um, she, she's just doing so good for herself, mm -hmm. you know. And at her wedding, we spoke about that. And she was like embracing that. She's glad that she had me, you know. Because of her, when I got adopted to my second family, I asked her, I asked my, um, my adopted mom, her name was Miss Pat, I asked her, can she take my roommate? And she was like, yeah. So she was like, you sure? I was like, yeah. She probably thought I would get jealous, you know, if, you know, because I haven't even, I wasn't even there for probably like a month, and I'm asking for her to bring somebody else. So she was probably like, are you going to be okay with that? You know, and I was like, yeah, I'm totally fine with that. That was my roommate. You know, I'm actually sad because we're apart. So she she bought her. So wow. we was living together. And from then I always been a motivation for Tyra, you know. We've been like white on rice. Well, you know, you, so, you, you born you born with your relatives and but you pick your family. I mean yeah. that's just something that, you know, you pick the people that you choose to spend that time with, the people that motivate you, you know, you stuck with your mm -hmm. relatives. But you know, that's good that you, you know, were able yeah. to that's nice that you able to you know and, and that selfishly was like forget about her I got me mm -hmm. I got me a woman mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. smart mm -hmm. her nah, she all right, she all <laughs> over there that's you know so that's 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 really dope that's really dope yeah and she's doing really good really really good so I mean that was my girl like I said I I met some good friends good peoples and you know I'm just thankful. So so before before we wrap up any anything that. You want people to know about um, about adoption, foster care, um, or any any motivation to get somebody to go out there and check out. If somebody's looking, you know, for a family that's you know they can't reproduce or that has extra space or has a lot of love to give. Anything you want to tell them about, you know? The only thing I would just say is just embrace who you are. You know, regardless what your struggles are, regardless what your background is, just embrace who you are. I feel like if you're able to to in any situation, love yourself and be able to accept yourself, you can get through anything. You know, mm -hmm. like she said, that was probably her therapy, herself, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. being able to just know that she was okay and she was comfortable in her own skin despite what everything was mm -hmm. going around with her. That's just always been my whole, like, my own inspiration. So that would be my inspiration to anybody. Just embrace yourself. Like, if you got to tell yourself at the end of the day, I love you, then say it. You know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you're going to keep you moving. Be your own motivation. Well, thank you, thank you, ladies, so so much yeah, for sharing your story, man. That was um, that was deep. I mean, you know, not very many, not very many people are going to come up here and you know share that much about themselves. So we we really really thank you for that. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Nah, appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. That was dope. Well, um, for National Adoption Month, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess that's it, right? I am your man, C. Yeah, man. So always. Here, man. As always. Um, you guys can sign off. LaVita, thanks for having us. Good night. Jackie, thank you. Good night. Shout out to Jen. Take care of them babies. We love you. Hopefully see you next week. Um, and this has been another edition of The One, The Only, The Two Real Radio. I was going to say that time. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Booty loops. New Jones is 22.